everyone see okay i hope yes we excellent. can see it excellent so uh yeah so thanks for um uh for the opportunity to talk a little bit about um a project that i've been working on for i guess the past uh five six months um, which is uh, a sort of rethinking uh, the way we do institutional or any kind of entity ranking um, using sites. So I'm uh, one of the co-founders of site.ai. Um, we recently uh, merged with a company called Research Solutions. So I kind of have a, it's a bit of a complicated history and we're now, uh, things are um, uh, getting bigger and we're growing. It's an exciting time uh, to be at site. Um, but uh, the thing that I've been really focusing on has been uh, institutional rankings. So, um, you know, some of you may have followed this uh, as part of your regular work. Um, others may not have. Uh, just to give you a, a bit of an overview, um, there are a number of, uh, of groups that put together, uh, you know, rankings of institutions in particular. Uh, so you've probably heard of some of these, like the Times Higher uh, Education uh, World University Rankings, um, the QS World University Rankings. Of course, we've already talked here. A number of folks have talked about uh, Leiden, uh, and their rankings, which uh, is a collaboration with Open Alex, um, so I'm very excited to see. Um, if you drill down into, you know, sort of the content of these rankings reports um, and look at their methodology, you know, you'll see a, a variety of different methods. Um, so it could be uh, something uh, as straightforward as citations to papers authored by individuals that have some kind of institutional affiliation. Uh, some of them involve surveys of uh, people involved with an institution, so faculty, staff, students. Um, others involve partnerships with uh, certain data providers or, uh, or publishers. Um, so there's a sort of wide variety of ways in which um, different outlets or different organizations pursue uh, institutional rankings. And... Um, you know, when we sat down and actually started thinking about, all right, what can site bring to the table? You know, this was kind of the question is, why do we need another one of these uh, sort of rankings reports? What would be different about uh, site rankings? And um, the, the big thing that we have to bring to the table, um, and, you know, if you've used site, you may be aware of this. If not, I'll, I'll go ahead and go over it. Um, the big thing is that site has access to the text of citations. Um, so I'll go over real quick how that's possible and, and how we do that, and then I'll talk about the implications for that and, and how we work with uh, OpenAlex data um, to combine and put together some of these uh, uh, reports. Um, Site actually uh, collects the text of uh, citations in the scholarly literature um, by a, a couple of different ways. Um, so uh, one is we collect open access publications. We, we work with um, basically the unpaywall data set to pull in PDFs. Uh, we then have a number of different pieces of software, different libraries that we use to actually uh, extract the text of the PDF, locate the text of a, a citation, tie it to a paper that it is citing. Uh, so this cited paper example over here. Um, and we also classify all of the text of the citations as being one of three types. So, um, for example, a citation might be uh, uh, classified as uh, supporting. Um, for example, this is uh, these results closely parallel those of Rife et al. So that's what we call a supporting citation. Uh, it could also be the other side of that coin if it's what we call a uh, a contrasting citation. So this finding differs from some previous studies, et cetera, et cetera. That would be an example of a contrasting citation. Um, and if you're interested, by the way, in sort of all the te technical details about how all this works and more the technical side of our infrastructure, uh, that paper down there in, in quantitative science studies um, has a lot of details about that. So I refer you to that. Um, but we take all this data. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped over it. We, we take all this data, both from open access publishers, uh, excuse me, open access papers uh, or anything that's within that uh, unpaywall data set. Uh, and we also combine it with uh, papers that we get directly from publishers. So we have indexing agreements with major publishers who will send us the entire back catalog of their content as well as an ongoing deposit of new papers. Um, and we run that through the same process. So we you know, take the PDF or XML document, uh, we locate the text of citations, we figure out what papers they are tied to, and then we insert all of that data into our database. So 
Um, we have a pretty comprehensive collection of, of papers through not just open access sources, um, but also through closed access sources. Um, and that really gives us a unique opportunity uh, combined with the fact that we're able to classify those citations in the way that I mentioned earlier, uh, and also combine our data with what we get from, uh, from open Alex. So that was really um, sort of the, the broader context. And um, you know, our, our, what we've been working on and what I've been working on has been really combining our site data with uh, data that we get from uh, Leiden, who have uh, been using now uh, OpenAlex for their uh, rankings reports. Um, and they make those data freely available. So we were able to go pull those down and uh, you know, combine that with sites data in order to come up with our own rankings reports. So there are some really straightforward things that are, are kind of obvious wins that you can do um, uh, once you have all of that data. Uh, you can do things like report the number of supporting citations, mentioning citations, or contrasting citations to a given uh, you know, uh, person or a given university. And again, this is what we use OpenAlex data for. Um, you can also break things down by, say, a university or a region, a journal, or a subject area. Um, I won't go into, just in the interest of time, too much of this sort of technical nitty-gritty detail. I actually <laughs> I feel a little bit bad in that I'm not showing any of my code the way like I think uh, Sylvia and, and other folks have been uh, earlier. I'll just say right here that at the moment, it is incredibly ugly. It's like this massive collection of spaghetti that's bordering on unreadable at this point. Um, so I'm a little bit embarrassed about it. But um, if you're looking to do something uh, similar, uh, you know, in terms of combining um, some, some of those data, especially what we get um, from, from Leiden and their collaboration with OpenAlex, um, by all means, let me know and I, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, it's, it's structured in a very neat way. It's very straightforward in the way the data are structured. Um, but it's a lot of data. And once you get past the point where you can hold everything in memory, you got to start figuring out some workarounds. So there are a lot of sort of tricks that I did in terms of like putting data into our Postgres database and putting things into lightning map memory uh, uh, stores and all that to, in order to make it actually uh, performant to a reasonable degree. Um, but anyway, uh, with that all said, um, we can do some so, some very cool things. Like for example, uh, just looking at uh, a single year, we can break down, for example, the number of supporting citations uh, that occur within any given field. So this is a sort of a basic high level breakdown of different uh, a number of different supporting citations by field. So across uh, biomedical and health services, uh, life and earth sciences, all the way through social sciences and humanities. Um, but we can do some other cool stuff too. Um, and uh, actually generate for uh, each of these entities uh, what we call the site index. Uh, so the site index um, is basically uh, based on the number of classifications that a, uh, an entity has received uh, or the number of citations of a particular classification. This actually goes back to a, a paper that's actually about 10 years old now that uh, my co-founders um, uh, published about what they called the R factor, which was basically just a, a metric that had built into it some indication of the, uh, the content of citations rather than simply a count of, of how many citations have occurred. Um, so we built this, uh, this site index product and it's visible in various places on site um, by simply taking the number of supporting citations that uh, have occurred to either a paper or a person or a, an institution um, and dividing it by the number of supporting and contrasting citations. So obviously higher is better and you want to get you know, as close to one as possible. Um, this is to my knowledge, um, and I'm happy to be corrected, um, but uh, to my knowledge, this is the only metric uh, currently in existence that actually takes into consideration the content of citations as opposed to simply the existence of a citation. So as, as someone who is just sort of dispositionally skeptical of, of uh, you know, um, sort of metrics like that and, and how often they can be sort of misused, um, uh, but also recognizing that they're not going anywhere regardless of, of what any of us may think. I think this is actually a, a pretty good step forward and that we're actually digging into the content of citations. Um, and so that makes for a much more useful um, metric in a lot of ways. Um, we can already start applying this to institutions. So, uh, you know, for example, we can you know, bring out over a, uh, you know, a one year period, um, the number of citations to a given institution, Harvard, Stanford. Um, and we can also apply that uh, site index 
to each of those institutions. Again, this is only possible because we're able to tie our data from an existing publication to a particular author that can then be tied back to a particular institution. Um, so all of that is what we're getting from Open Alex um, through the, the uh, Leiden data. Um, and of course, there are a bunch of other things uh, that are possible um, that we uh, are looking at going forward, um, all of this relying on open Alex data in one way or another. Um, so uh, author and journal level self citations. Um, one thing that I, I think is really cool is the idea of looking at uh, when people cite themselves, but are sort of critical of their past selves. Um, this is actually the idea that, that uh, my co-founder Josh uh, came up with, I think actually highlighting people for doing that. It would be great if we could like identify instances where that happens and really sort of celebrate that sort of self-correcting element of, of, of scholarship. Um, you know, you can do most supported papers by region or institution. Um, we can also have uh, uh, maybe investigations into author diversity. Uh, so I'm also a, a professor at a university at Murray State University here in Kentucky, and uh, I had a graduate student last year who actually was interested in, you know, our papers that have a broader array of authors from, say, different uh, racial groups or nationalities. Do they receive more supporting citations? Um, uh, that's a project that we're, we're still looking at. Uh, the short answer right now is probably not, but uh, the, it's still a bit of an open question. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that, uh, that can, that can be done with this and, and we're really excited, you know, I'm really excited to, to be working on this project and, and start to bring out some of these rankings that have, um, a lot more granular data built in, in terms of the content of citations, which is sort of the underlying theme here. Um, I will point out the, uh, this sort of big, minute. yep. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah, this is, um, in fact, actually, this is something that I know I, uh, Kyle and I have talked about um, is, you know, the challenge here is often with author data quality. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to work with the line data in particular is because that they have done a lot of, of work with Open Alex to, to actually really get that to a really good place. Um, but, you know, uh, many entities uh, can only be linked uh, to citations through author data. Um, and, you know, when you start sorting by, say, top number of publications uh, or type number of citations, you can reveal some problematic instances. Um, in my own work, working on self citations for site, we've found problems with short names or very common names. Um, and so that's a big challenge. I know that, that Open Alex has been doing a lot of work to really, uh, to, to really address that issue. And, um, Big thumbs up for, for all that because I know how hard a a problem that is to uh, to deal with. Um, my favorite sort of example is that uh, Orc IDs you think would solve this, they don't solve this. In fact, what was my favorite little factoid is that people often have multiple Orc IDs, which is not how that is supposed to work. So um, anyway, major kudos for for people who are working on that uh, side of the project. And uh, I'll stop sharing now. Hang on one second. Awesome. Thank you, Sean.